Now welcome to a Mandalorian discussion video where this time the topic is going to be Elia Kane, corruption from within. Oh. I know I came up with a catchy thing and stuff. This is what I do when I do stuff. <laughs> Alright, so I want to discuss her role in this season. I want to discuss what this means in the bigger picture. My first question that we can talk about here, is she there on purpose? What I think mean? she is. Moff Gideon is a supreme tactician, right? I would think so. She Ask was his trusted comms officer. You know, yeah. she, we've seen her discussing things with him back in the old days, earlier seasons of Mandalorian. She's been with him for a long time, if we believe the time frame really is years now. As a supreme tactician, he had to know about the amnesty program, right? It's not like it's a secret. Probably, yeah, almost certainly. I mean, they advertised it in a big old presentation with uh, Dr. Pershing. Absolutely. So let's say, would he possibly have used that to his advantage? Maybe he's got a, hey guys, if I'm captured clause, this is this is the next plan. Or maybe his boss, who we all think is Thrawn, has this plan too. These are, these are smart fellas. Supreme tacticians, as I called them. Maybe... He would use these people to his advantage to help cover up the things he was doing. If he's just a cog in Thrawn's machine, these officers who are loyal would do their best to cover everything up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what's to say they didn't go into the amnesty program fully aware that they could disrupt from within? That they could cover up his secrets, hide things, take out things that shouldn't be there. You know what I'm saying? Like Dr. Pershing? Yes, like Dr. Pershing. So what were they afraid with with Dr. Pershing? He knew stuff. Maybe he hasn't fully disclosed what he was doing for the Empire. Maybe what he was doing was so horrific. Or maybe he came up to him and said, Hey guys, we're building a new Emperor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or some crazy stuff like that. Maybe he we didn't want to admit him. to something like that. Yes, I mean, I suppose. Do you think that Anakin, if he was getting to come back to the Jedi Order, would be like, oh, Hey guys, I did kill all the younglings. Just getting that out there. Mm, or if they didn't awkward. know, maybe he wouldn't say anything. You do have a point. Like, Pershing was probably up to some really bad stuff. He wanted to emphasize what his research could do to benefit people. Yeah. What he wanted it to do. Not exactly what he was doing with it. Good point. He didn't say, like, this is what I was doing for the Emperor. He said, this is what I wanted to be doing. So, if you're Elia Kane, if you are now undercover trying to protect things, hiding things out in the Outer Rim that you know that the remnants are up to, even though they have... Moff Gideon, if they're in there and they're subverting things from the inside, they know the remnants are still alive and they're still doing their job out there, that you, there's still a plan. Do you think she's trying to uh, kind of feel some people out? in the? I mean, yes. kind of stupid to put them all together in like a giant building. Oh, it's, it's building. a terrible idea. And I, I feel like I get just got the sense she was just testing Pershing to see if he was like a for the Empire kind of guy. And when he wasn't, she decided to fry his brain. I think so. I think she pegged him as a liability. Someone who's not truly in this for Gideon, who's not here for his cause, who's not faking it like the rest of them are. Think about it. What's the one thing you miss about the Empire? Um, I guess I miss the cookies. <laughs> I miss my yellow biscuits. <laughs> well, they were good biscuits. The others who were sitting there, I feel like they are still people who are like, well, you know, the Empire had some good things. Go. I yeah. feel like, you know, she, she knows who in the Amnesty program is someone that she can rely on, who is still going to help with the Empire. How else do you think she gets so much information to do the things she does? She knew the moment Pershing sh showed up. She was sitting at that bench waiting for him to yeah. walk by. What I'm, what I'm wondering is, how did she get so in with the New Republic? I mean, she's literally, you know, we got to... my French, but she's a kiss-ass. Well, sure. But I mean, she's literally in this office, you know, a, a colonel's office, and high sensitive information no doubt comes through there. Like, well, And she's, she's at the door just eavesdropping. She's clearly a good actress, for one. Yeah. She managed to fool Pershing. She, she did probably fool goes Pershing, to the Amnesty yeah. program crying about some made up reason as to why she was working with the Empire. Oh, the Empire killed my family, or Gideon, they took my family, or some other lame reason of what they what reason she had to be in there. She's a comms officer. That could even be a fake rank so that she'd get overlooked enough to do these things. She could True. be a Gideon spy master. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're the New Republic, you probably want to think that these people are salvageable in, to a degree. Uh, that's the wrong word, but, but you, you want to believe that, that you can, can yeah, you want to believe you can reform them. There we go, not salvageable. I sound like I'm Hemlock talking about the clones now. Well, I want to know, how many others has she taken care of? 
Well, she just, and possibly other people that she might be working with on the inside. That's what I wonder, because how did they not notice it got cranked? I mean, they left her in the, the room alone. She cranked it up to 11. Didn't, like, afterwards Pershing just seem a little too mellowed out? Well, that's too big brain for the Mandalorian show to get back to, I guess. Or they will next episode. Who knows? But there has to be something. Well, she could say the machine malfunctioned, and I called you guys as soon as I noticed it. Yeah. Coincidence. Right. If she is the actress I think she is... She could sell that. Well, she clearly got away with it, like I said, in this latest mm-hmm. episode, which clearly takes place after the no, Pershing I think episode. She's, she's crying over him. What's wrong with him? Oh, my friend. Who knows? Mm. But I think she's an incredible actress. That's what I think. She is a spy. And ISP. I think she works with the other Amnesty program people and that they bump off people who they don't think they can trust or at least know who they can and who they cannot trust as conspirators. I mean, when Carson Teva showed up, To increase New Republic activity in the Outer Rim, she interfered to keep them away from that area. Reminding them, though this area is independent, we can't... By the way, Navarro didn't sign the charter. Which which makes her sound like a good little Republic soul, you know. Because (laughs) look at we have to follow the Republic's laws and rules because I follow all Republic laws and rules. No, no, she's keeping them away from there because that area is of interest for the remnants. Yeah, for some reason... I mean, Tiva implied mm-hmm. that he thought Navarro might be something of interest because the pirates were interested, the Empire was interested, or the remnants Maybe were interested. Think about it. They had a base there, too. That's the they base did. that they Pershing sent a message to, and they were That's doing right. some cloning or something there. Yeah, they were doing... There is something there. there. Or at least there were projects, and they need to keep this as far away from the New Republic as they can, so they need to keep the New Republic away from the Outer Rim. Yeah. My next big question was, how far up does this go? We can assume that this amnesty program has been active for years now, perhaps even since the war ended. Probably, no doubt, yeah. I mean, think about it. Uh, If you remember the book Lost Stars, one of the best new canon books there is, (laughs) the girl in the, at the end, she was Empire, she got captured by the Republic. She disappeared. I'd like to think she eventually would get into the amnesty program. Probably. Mm Mm-hmm. Because he still loved her, and I think there was hope for her. I think she would have been into program and that's just my own little theory and she would have been killed by a <laughs> mm. for being not loyal she would have there that's her that's how she ended but with this program being on for how long how many program members graduated from this program i'm assuming there's an end point to you having to wear the badge that's not like a lifer thing is it i, mean, I don't how? think so i think there's got to be a point where they go you know what you've been Doing, following all the rules, you've been liberated for X amount of time. Don't forget, she hasn't been free from the Empire. I cited air quotes. From the Empire that long. Gideon hasn't even gone to trial yet. She hasn't well, been... So he's not f- going to trial. Spoiler no. alert. I'm just saying she's been free for a short amount of time. Yeah. But I'm sure eventually people graduate-ish, whatever they want to call it, from the Amnesty program, move out of Amnesty housing, and continue on and have normal lives. Probably, yeah. That's the whole point of the program. It's rehabilitation and integration. Yeah. So once they decide Salvage. you're good, they put you back out on the streets there and you can go and live a life. Yeah, but how long does that take? We don't know. That's part of the th- my issue is how long does it take to get out? How many people have worked their way up through the amnesty program? And back into the New Republic. Yes, and back into the New Republic. If, hmm. Who might be serving possible government jobs... Doing just even little things like, oh, I run a communications terminal f- that leads to the outer rim. Things that could help set up things we see in the sequels with how easy it was for the First Order to carve their own space. I love the change in your voice there. As if you're disgusted with your figuring this out. Things that, that could the make it easier for the Empire to actively uh, do things out in the outer rim without the New Republic noticing. Coincidences that keep things out there unknown. Yeah, I mean, if the sequels are going to remain canon, which seems almost like an absolute certainty at this point, I would love for them to be explained. And you got a you got an uphill battle, including the fact that the New Republic just rolled over and died. Well, we can't forget how much corruption was left behind by the Empire. Well, yeah, I don't you... think that somebody who might secretly support the Empire might see somehow be in charge of the amnesty program? Well, I think that if you go back to the Pershing episode with the, the rich people, or, oh, I don't care who's in... You know, the people with money are, are still... Probably corrupt as well, right? Like I said, there's corruption left over. Maybe some of those corrupted individuals are people who are even in charge of the amnesty program. You want to know another reason why she might have gotten a higher ranked position? Maybe somebody else put her there. Good point. We have no idea. Even the official he talked to, for all we know, 
he could have been a corrupted official left over from the Empire who just said, oh, I just, I had to do it. If I didn't keep doing my job, then people on this area wouldn't have gotten food or I was running transportation. But well, maybe with, people still supported what the Empire was doing. Well, without a doubt, there were people who probably profited greatly under the Empire. Some of the, of course, some of the rich and wealthy in Coruscant probably did quite well and wouldn't mind if things went back to the way they were before. Wait, did they really manage to root out every single corrupt no. politician in the galaxy? Absolutely not. No. Then, of course, you talked about their profiteers in the indifferent rich people. You, They smell money, they'll go if they think that maybe... Oh, I was running a, sh- a shipbuilding business or something, and uh, the remnants of the Empire seem to want to buy ships. <laughs> Guess I know where the money's at. Guess I know what I'm going to be doing and for you, whom. You sound like DJ from the sequels now. It's just facts. <laughs> it is facts. He's, but, he wasn't wrong. But all of these things have an effect subverting the Republic from within. Yes, which is kind of, like I said, if you're going to keep the sequels canon, you've got a lot of explaining to do. And this is, I think, clearly part of that. Right. I really admire what they're doing with Elia Kane, as long as they're actually being as deep as I think they are. <laughs> you, I'm turning Elia Kane into an Andor character. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you're in the wrong show she's right Luth, now. She's my Luthan Rail. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of and Rail, yeah. It is. It's the side that she's instead your of... She's axis, yeah. Yes, because instead of working on the inside... You are, yeah, you were in the way wrong the, show, right? Gilroy is listening like, hmm, maybe I should take this she one is, over too. You just thought, think of it, she's got this little perky like person. Oh, how can I help, guys? <laughs> she does, she's got the mask. Just There's like Luthen. Luthen with his shop and then yeah. she's like, breaker, breaker, one nine, we've got a kill person. <laughs> That's a bad not, guy who's not working for the right team. You know the team, <laughs> E-team, Empire all the way. Oh boy. <laughs> but these are the things alive. that I think about during the day and I wrote notes and I wanted to share them with everybody else because I think... If they are doing what I want them to be doing oh, with this I character, want them. these are my theories. No, I think you're on the. I absolutely think you're on the right track. I How? feel like these things make sense. She's a plant, and she's protecting Gideon's thing. She's protecting the future of the Empire by sitting within the Republic, pretending to be a good little girl. I absolutely agree with you. How far down the rabbit hole Filoni and Favreau have kind of thought about this is, mm-hmm. I mean, probably quite a bit. I would think and this imagine could even help. This could even help explain why. The New Republic was like immediately like, let's get rid of all our weapons, guys. Well, that was like Mon Mothma herself. Mon Mothma, yes, but you know, people had to agree with this. They can't well, just, yeah. she doesn't well. have supreme power. <laughs> She's not the chancellor. I are, with our first vote as the New Republic, I grant emergency <laughs> powers to Mon Mothma. I'm just yes. saying, why couldn't she be influenced by people? No, you're, you're right. I mean, she probably was really... And even that stupid idea of getting rid of all the military, how many of these rich businesses did she put under who make ships, who you... train soldiers, who make weapons, who... God, you're putting it all together. You're like Deidre now. You're the one oh, talking and nobody's listening. Why do I have listening. to be Deidre? Because Deidre was the crazy obsessed one. <laughs> but I just wanted no, everyone are, to know I my mean, thoughts. It, it actually does all make sense. Mon Mothma shuts down military spending by 90%. <laughs> That's going to piss off a lot of really, really, really wealthy people. Mm-hmm. The wrong people. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, so, oh, the New Republic doesn't want to buy our stuff? Well, there's this little remnant going on in the Outer Rim and Wild Space that is really interested. And they're kind of a secret because Elia kane has been keeping all the New Republic <laughs> people away. <laughs> no, I think, I think you're right. I mean, I think it would make a ton of sense. Hopefully this is what they're doing. Hopefully you didn't just outthink them. <laughs> Oh, it'll be sad if I outthink them. It will be sad because they get because paid a lot of money do to do well, this. Yeah. Unless they do something equally cool. Yeah, I, no, I think you're absolutely right to some degree. I mean, I think you're definitely on the right track. It, it all makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go write Andor in season two now. <laughs> you mean Me and season... Tony Gilroy. i got to get on a phone call with him. we got to talk about these uh, big brain we, ideas we got. We need you on The Mandalorian. <laughs> it's not deep enough. It's not deep enough. <laughs> All right, well, that is going to be all we got for you this time. So now it's your turn to take to the comments below and uh, tell us what you think. Is Naboo on the right track? Is she being a little Deidre Merrill right now? And uh, Or am I just making up? Or are you just being crazy? <laughs> Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.